So tonight we will be talking about the protocols of heaven or the protocol of the courts of heaven. Some of us will be asking questions, sasabihin natin, eh, bakit kailangan pa ng ano, ng protocol, di ba? Akala ko, si Lord simple lang, di ba? Akala natin, si Lord ay uh, pwede kang lumapit, di ba? So, bakit may kailangan pa rin protocols? Dito sa lupa, you cannot live without protocols. Example, the COVID-19. They develop a new protocol. Kapag hindi ka naka-face mask, hulihin ka, magmulta ka. Kahit nga mag-isa ka sa sasakyan eh. <clears throat> Pagmultahin ka. Kahit wala kang kasama. Oh, it's a protocol. Tama po? Oh. Kahit walang COVID, subukan mong pumasok sa mall. Protocol is what? Bubuksan nila ang bag mo. Wala kang magawa. Kahit uh, minsan nga eh, natatawa ako eh. Yung pasok ka sa mall, may dalang sasakyan. Yung security guard, may dalang salamin, alam nyo yun. Merong yung mahabang tubo, ganyan, mga one meter na tubo. Sa dulo, merong salamin. Tapos inilalagay dun sa ilalim yung ano, tinitingnan nila yung ilalim ng sasakyan mo. Sabi ko, where did they get this kind of protocol? Naalala ko na kung saan. Sa pelikula. Hmm. Eh wala naman maglalagay ng bomba doon sa ilalim ng sasakyan. <laughs> Nako yung yung sabihin. <laughs> Normally ko may bomba din sa loob. <laughs> But wala kang magawa. That is what we call protocol. You cannot live without protocol. Si Duterte nga eh. Nung naging presidente, na-initia kasi ang daming protocol na hinihingi yung ano, presidential security group. May kaibigan nga ako eh. Panahon ni Cory, uh, he is one, she is one of the close-in security ni Cory. Maganda yung trabaho niya, tumaba nga eh. Kasi, pag si Cory papunta sa isang lugar, Nauna sila. At sila yung tumitikim sa lahat ng pagkain. Nakakainin ni Cory. Imagine that. <laughs> That's part of what? A protocol. So pag nakordo na yon, wala nang pwedeng maglagay, magbawas. That's it. So, in this life, you cannot live without protocols. Same true with God in heaven. Actually, there are certain protocols that we are following. Kaso lang hindi natin tinitingnan that that is the protocol of God. I give you an example. ba? Diba? If you regard iniquity in your heart, God will not listen to you. Tama? Oh. If you will not forgive, God will not forgive you. If you're going to offer something at na-realize mo na meron kang kagalit, sabi niya, iwan mo ang iyong ano, offering, bumalik ka, tsaka ka bumalik after you reconcile with your brother. Oh. Then sabi ng Psalm uh, 24, who can ascend to the hill of the Lord? Those of a clean hands and a pure heart. Sabi ni Lord, if you confess your sin, He is just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. What is the protocol? The protocol is, you have to confess. Because the basis of the forgiveness of God is not only the cross, what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, is when we confess, when we agree with Him. Nakuha niyo po? So, in the Bible, there are so many protocols. Hindi lang tayo aware. Okay? Now, in the court of heaven, there is also protocol. And some of these are already written in the Bible. Some of these would be what? You're going to experience it when you go to the court. Kaya, I'll be sharing to you some principles na kailangan natin at this time. Then, as you progress in the courts of heaven, you will what? Experiencing some protocols na sa'yo lang sinabi ni Lord. Nakuha niyo po? So, 
Katulad nung ginagawa namin na submission. We're using the protocol that uh, God taught to reveal to Brother Robert Mist. And then, there will come a time na kung kami bibigyan ni Lord ng ibang protocol, we will do the same then. ba? Diba? Okay? So, for the meantime, yung mga nakaranas doon sa Court of Heaven, let's just hear from them ano yung mga protocol na kanilang ano, nakagisnan. The question is, I thought coming to God is so simple. We don't need certain protocols. That's what I've explained to you. There are protocols. Hindi mo lang alam, hindi mo lang napapansin na yun ay mga protocols na. Okay? So, Psalm 24. Diba? Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in His holy place? He who has a clean hands and a pure heart, who does not leap up his soul to what is false, and does not swear deceitfully. Oh. Eh kung wala lang si Kristo, you cannot stand before God. Nakuha niyo po, lahat tayo guilty. Oh. And thank God for what the Lord Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Because of that, we can now ascend to the hill of the Lord. Mark 5, if anyone is offering you a gift at the altar and they remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Hmm, di ba? Maliwanag ng protocol. Psalm 100, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. So, you cannot enter the presence of God without thanksgiving. You cannot even enter the court without praise. Sa earthly court, bawal ang kumanta. O, oh, di ba? Earthly court, di ka pwedeng pumasok doon na kumakanta ka. Palising ka ng judge. But in the courts of heaven, this is a requirement. You enter in worship. Nakuha niyo pa? That's part of the protocol. Okay? So when you present your case in an earthly courtroom, in an earthly courtroom, you must follow the proper protocol. Sa mga abogado nga, may mga protocol sila, may mga damit na nire-require yung judge. Eh. Nakuha niyo po? All these rules and procedures are specified and written down. Okay? So, sa korte. So, inaaral yan. Pali mo mag-aaral ka mga abogas yan. Inaaral yan yung mga protocol sa courtroom courtroom protocols kasama yun sa exam okay because the judge can you can order you to rem, to be removed from the courtroom if you don't comply with these regulations during a court session the orderly development is what closely monitored Ganyan ang korte sa lupa. They monitored. Kaya laging may nakatayo doon na sheriff. They have to make it sure na ano. The order of the judge is what? Being followed. Okay? There is always a proper respect given to each party that is present during the court session, the defense and the prosecutor. There's always a proper respect. Okay? So when you're in the court of heaven, hindi ka pwedeng magsisigaw doon at sigawan mo ang kaaway mo. Nakuha niyo po? Sisigawan mo si satanas at mumurahin mo? Ay, hindi pwede yun. Di ba? Maraming gumagawa niyan, kinukurse nila si Satan. You cannot do that. All those who are present are educated in the law and have taken their bar exam. So alam nila yung procedure. In some nations, they are all wear black robes. In uh, England, even the legislators, they wear black globes at meron pa silang wig. Which shows that they have a formal capacity and privileges. 
And these roles and privileges are to be respected by everyone in the courtroom. I'll give an example doon sa Australian Senate. Uh, the majority floor leader opened the sessions. So nilagay nila doon sa unahan yung tinatawag nilang mace. Alam niyo yung mace? Yung bilog na ganon na may seal at may mahaba na ganyan. Pag nag pinagbang ng gable ng presiding officer at nilagay na yung mace The session has formally started. And the majority for leader has to excuse because there's some emergency in his family that occur. So you know what happened? When he leaves the premises, he has to walk backward. Hindi siya tumalikod doon sa presiding officer. It is a respect to the position of the presiding officer. And then he has to walk backward. Until he reached the door at saka lang sa tumalikod. These are what? It's a protocol. Even in an earthly court, there are protocols. Diba? How much more the heaven? Okay? So there is a different difference between showing someone respect in a courtroom and honoring someone. Even the enemy, the devil is our enemy, you should respect him in the courtroom. Kaso lang, out of our desperations, the way we deal with the devil is different. Eh. We shout at him. Hindi man bingi ang kaaway. We don't honor the demons during our court sessions. But we honor the court's protocol because we are in a courtroom of the eternal judge. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya, hindi ka pwedeng magsisigaw doon. So the adversary of the Holy One of God are standing on trial for all the atrocities they have done in the life of a child of God. That is what's happening. When you go to the court and you presented your evidence, your grievances, your injustice that happens to you and to other people, the adversary are standing on trial here. Nakuha niya po? So, let God make the make the judgment, not you. Kaso lang, yung natutunan natin, natutunan natin na spiritual warfare, the fight is in our hands. We've been so motivated trying to fight the devil. Kaya ang tawag namin doon is what? Battlefield prayers. Ito yung mga prayers na address kay Satan that we are trying to rebuke him, we are trying to uh, resist him, we are trying to bind him. Diba? Oh, ang tawag doon ay ano? Battlefield prayers. We are not screaming in the courtroom. Not on earth, especially in heaven. You're not going to scream. Because the demons aren't deaf, they have a good hearing. Alam niyo bakit? Di ba kami mga nagka-cast out ng demonyo, sumisigaw at the top of his voice. Ilang oras na niyang ginagawa yung rebuke na in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, bakit hindi siya umaalis? Alam niyo ang ano? Susi? Alam niyo ang katotohanan? The demon has no eardrums. They are spirit. Nakuha niyo po? They are spirit. The only way that they can hear you is when you speak in the realm of the spirit. Tayo, kaya hindi dating kuminsan marinig ang Diyos, nagsasalita sa atin, because we're trying to use our what? Eardrums. But there are times God uses an audible voice. Kaya ano, naririg mo siya, may tumatawag sa'yo. But most of the time, when He speaks to us, He is speaking in our spirit. Nakuha niyo po? 
not to our eardrums. Kaya kung minsan, yung iba, sabi nila, bakit hindi ko marinig ang boses ng Diyos? Tara, hindi mo marinig yan. Because you're trying to use your mind or your eardrums. Nakaan niya po? These demons, this, the devil, are spirit being. But when you use your spirit in commanding them or telling them or rebuking them, the demons, you, you, makakarating sa kanila. But if you're just only using your voice, sumisigaw ka lang, wala silang eardrum. They cannot, they cannot hear you. No, no, niya po. Because they are spirit being. Ganun din tayo. We are human being, but God gave us a spirit. But the problem is, we don't use our spirit in relation to God or to the, to the things of the spiritual or to the spiritual things. That's the reason why we miss what God is saying to us. Nakukun niyo po? Kaya no, na-experience namin, pag nagkakasaan ng demonyo, maabot tatlo, isang, isang linggo. Sigaw na kami ng sigaw. Oh. Ngayon ko lang na-realize, eh kung may eardrum yung mga demonyo, sana narinig ka na niya. Eh hindi. Wala mo silang eardrum eh. Nakuha niyo po? So how do you do that? In the realm of the Spirit. You're using your Spirit. So we don't curse them. What we do is we hold him, him responsible. We hold them responsible for everything they have done. How, how you do that? You bring it before the courts of heaven. Because when you curse them, when you shout of them, that is what? A, uh, anong tawag dyan? Yung gawain ng talunan yan. And a desperate one. Kaya pinagtatawanan lang tayo ng kaaway. We ask God, the eternal judge, to render a verdict that is consistent with the atrocities they have performed against us, against our nations, against your churches, or against the community. Ezekiel 23, The Lord said to me, Son of man, will you judge Ohola? and Oholiba. Then declare to them their abominations, for they have committed adultery, and the blood is on their hands. It is God. Di ba? This is our assignment in the courts of heaven. We judge the enemies of our God. How do we do that? We bring it before the courts of heaven. We judge the enemies of God by making public all things that they have performed in secret. Everything that they did against us has to be brought to the courts of heaven. Parang ganito lang yun eh. Ang daming petty crimes na nangyayari, nagagawa, nagaganap. Pero karamihan dyan, halimbawa, like for example, cell phone is snatching. Halimbawa, nahuli yung nag-snatch. Nakuha naman ng tao yung kanyang cell phone. Kadalasan, hindi na nagfa-file ng kaso yan because abala pa. Oh, what happens? Pag walang nag-file, walang nagreklamo, palalayain niya ng ano, ng pulis. They cannot hold them na mas matagal kasi wala namang kaso eh. Nakuha niya po. Madalas, if we did not bring the, the case to the courts of heaven, this demon spirit, this fallen son, will continually create havoc in our life. They will continually what? Destroy our nations. Why? They're at loose eh. But if we bring it before the court and the court release judgment on this spirit, oh, pwede silang arestuhin ang mga angel. Okay? We present the evidence in the courts of heaven for the things these demons did. Oh, ngayon, malapit na naman ang election. Oh. Alam natin, yung Comelec, ganun na naman. So, anong gagawin natin? I bring his atrocities that he's doing against the Comelec. Hmm. 
So the enemy doesn't want the veils removed that block his activities from public. That from the public side. Because everyone will then be able to see who he really is. Ayaw niya itong mabulgar. At ang magbubulgar niya ay ang kanyang eklesiya. Dadali niya ngayon doon saan? Sa korte, sa langit. Okay? There is a court clerk in heaven. There is a clerk, clerk, uh, court clerk here on earth. Okay, every time yung judge darating, pagpasok na nung judge, papasok na siya, pag lahat ay ando na, oras na, papasok siya. At bago siya sa pumasok, the clerk court will, will shout, All rise! That is a standard protocol, all rise. It's a respect to the position of the judge. May nangyaring ganyan eh. Doon sa Netherlands, This guy, this judge is known to be biased. Yung abogado, alam din niya na bias nga itong tao na ito. So may offense na siya sa puso niya. So nung dumating yung judge, nung sinabi nung uh, court clerk, sabi niya, all rise, honorable judge, ganyan-ganyan, presiding, hindi siya tumayo. You know what happens? He was contempt. At ang mabigat pa, tinanggalan siya ng lisensya na pagiging abogado. Oh. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court, even though there is a perceived uh, mm, partiality upon the person, upon the judge, when the judge requires you to stand, you are respecting not the person. You are honoring what? The position. of the judge. Yun ang ruling ng korte. So, natanggalan siya ng lisensya. So, we don't rise for the person of the judge. But for the office of the judge. Magkaiba po yan. So, we rise for the position, the power and authority that the office of the judge represent. So, when we rise, we show respect for the office of the judge and the institution of the court. Same true in the court of heaven. This has been our practice. Every time we submit, and when the judge arrived, when the court is in con- uh, was convened, we stood up. We rise up and we honor the honorable judge that is present in our meeting. Hmm. Ba? Importante yon. You have to respect the position of the judge. Okay, the protocols in the courts of heaven are in much different than the ones on the earth. Okay? You cannot enter a court and just start presenting your case. You have to make it sure that the court is in session and the books were open. You must first be given the proper authority to do that. You have to wait. That's why when you go to the court, you did first what? You praise and worship muna. So, pag na-sense mo na na ando na ang presence ni Lord, sasabihin ng Panginoon, now, present your case. Oh. Nung una pa nga namin itong ginagawa, eh, yung, yung anak ko ay si Ear, sabi niya, Dad, walang nakikinig sa'yo. <laughs> Teko, bakit? E, recess yung court eh. <laughs> Di ba? Salita ka lang, salita. Wala na wala kikinig sa'yo. <laughs> Kasi yung court is not convened. It's in recess. So you have to wait. Nakuha niyo po? You have to wait. That's why it's important na may CR kayong kasama. And they can say, pas- sasabi niya ako, Pastor, ready na po mag-submit. Oh. Fortunately, We, re- we have received this right to enter the court of grace and mercy anytime we want to. May right tayo. Because what? We are a citizen of heaven. Second, you are a priest of God. 
and in the Old Testament, only the priest ang ano, ang pwede lang ano, lumapit sa presence ng Diyos. Okay? Priest lang. Thirdly, you are sons of God. He is your father. You can come to the court anytime. Kaya nga ang description ng, ng trono ni Lord is what? May gulong. Mobile court, may gulong. In other words, you can convene the court anytime you want. That's how our God is so faithful and love us. So if you feel there is a condemnation in you, there is a guilty feeling inside of you, you're being condemned by the devil, you go to the court. Baka may accusation sa iyo ang kaaway. Deal it in the courts of heaven. Huwag mo nang patagalin. Di ba sabi ni Lord, muhaya ng paglubugan ng araw ang galit mo? Anong ibig sabihin? You have to deal it in the courts of heaven. Because kung hindi, pag tumagal yan, oh, maranasan mo yung consequences. Nung hindi mo pagsagot doon sa accusation ng kaaway. But that doesn't mean that there are no protocols we are obligated to follow. There are protocols. Okay? Okay. Before we begin presenting our case in court, we first show respect to the judge and those who are present in court. Okay, that's why if you're in the courts of heaven, you are not allowed to talk in your own. You have to wait. The judge would ask you. You have to wait. You cannot even uh, make a, what we call that, declaration in the court. You cannot make a decree in the court. You know why? It is only God who made, a, or it is only the judge who make a decree. A decree is the decision of the court. So if you're in a court, that's not your area. Bakit? The heavens belongs to God and the earth was given to man. Here on earth, you can make decree or declarations. But in heaven, if you're in a court of heaven, you are not allowed to make decree. You have to wait for God to release the decree. Then you go down here on earth, that's, make, that's the way you make a declaration of the decree that you receive from heaven. We do this by honoring Him and asking Him to open the court session. Sasabihin mo, Your Honor, I'm here as your son. And the, the priest, after the order of Melchizedek, I'm here, Lord, and asking permission to enter your court through the blood of Jesus. We request that I will be seen by the righteousness of Christ that is in me. Oh, yun. You, you ask permission. Sometimes you don't need the yung, yung template susundan. Kapag alam mo na, just uh, listen to the Holy Spirit. He will tell you what to say before the court. Why? He is your witness. Eh. He is your parakletos. The one, the one who stand alongside with you. Okay? If the court is not in session, then no verdict can be rendered. Nakuha niyo po? Sabi ng Daniel 7.10, the court was seated and the books were open. So, the first thing that you need to understand is the court must be in session. Okay? So, it is impossible to read or write in the book when it is closed. Tama po ba? It sounds simple and it is. So, it is also crucial that everything that happens during a court session is recorded. That's why there is what? A uh, court of record, angel of... May angel doon na nagsusulat sa scroll. So in every formal court session, there is always, there is always a clerk court. Dito sa lupa, mayroong clerk present. Anong trabaho niya? 
nag-scribe, nagti-take note. Kaya di ba meron pang dati na tinatawag silang uh, istenographer. Di ba? Meron maliit na parang typewriter. Doon siya nag inaano niya. Sinusulat niya yung din is proceedings, nire-record niya yung proceedings. I don't know up to now, ay ginagamit pa yun, I don't know. Kasi meron ng mga ano eh, meron ng recordings ngayon, pwede nang i-record eh. I don't know kung allowed pa rin o ginagamit pa rin yung stenographer. Okay? It is important that we need to respect the court. It is important for us to recognize the authority of the heavenly court. And we have to speak it out loud. So when you enter the court, you said, Lord, your honor, I ask permission. Oh. Ganun dapat. You respect the court. Nakuha niyo po? So if we don't recognize the court, we can present our case there. Di ba? Luke chapter 18, verse 7. A verse 6, sabi niya, God is going to ano, give uh, justice to His elect who cry out to Him day and night. Sabi niya, speedily, yun ang promise niya, bibigay niya sa atin yung hustisya na kailangan natin. Pero tingnan yung sumunod na praise. Nevertheless, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on earth? Oh. God wants to give us justice. But if we don't recognize the authority of the court, nothing happens. Same true with the blood of Jesus. Unless we recognize that through the blood of Jesus, our sin has been, we have been cleansed from the sin. Tama po? And because of that, we can enter to the presence of God. That's the only time nagkakaroon ng took effect yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ sa krus ng kalbaryo sa buhay natin. But until we believe. But if you don't believe, it will not, it, it, it will serve nothing in your life. Why? You don't recognize the court. Kaya marami nakarinig ng mga topic tungkol sa courts of heaven. But why is it until now they are not applying it because they still don't believe. Makita niyo po yan. Subukan niyo. That's why I challenge all of you. Go to the court and make a submission. Oh. Ako marami na po kami mga testimonies. 2019, I have a friend na tinulungan namin. May kaso yung lupa niya that is uh, almost less than 1,000 hectares. Nilan grab ng mga judges. Ng sindikato. Oh. At the end, siya pa ang, yung pamilya pa, yung pamilya niya pa ang uh, inaakusahan na land grabber. Samantalang nakatitle sa pangalan ng lolo niya yung lupa. Meron lang scrupulous na mga taga register of deed tinataka na parang cancelled yung kanyang title. Imagine that. At ang ginawa ng mga judges na involved ay pinag-subdivide ito mga lote na ito at ibinenta. Hmm. Yan, how could you reclaim that? Eh simula do sa taas ang sindikato. Oh, BIR register of deed hanggang sa korte. So sabi ko sa kanya, let's go to the court. Inakusahan pa ng ano, ng illegal possession of explosive. Nireg yung opisina niya, naglagay ng granada sa kanyang opisina. Imagine that. Oh, nakulong pa siya. Oh. And then later on, sabi na, masigi, dalhin natin sa korte. You know what happened? This December, nakabenta na sila ng lupa. Out of that property. Oh. Dati yung barangay captain na galit sa kanila, ngayon nakikipagbati na, kinakausap na sila. Mm. Yung judge sa sangkot, malapit ang matanggal. 
You, you see the point. But at the start, sabi niya, totoo ko yan yun. So parang gano'n. Nakarating nga sa akin, baka binubola lang tayo ni Pastor Dante. Oh. Tapos kahit yung mga nakita ng mga CRQ ni question pa rin niya. Sabi ko, okay lang yon. Eh si Lord, di man na na so surprise dyan sa mga responses natin. Alam na ni Lord yung mga response natin. Our unbelief, oh, alam na ni Lord dyan. But I tell you, at the end of the day. Oh. Kaya sabi ko, si, sabi na nabalitaan ko. Hindi na kanakalang dumaan sa korte yung titulo ng lupa nila. I-issue na lang LRA, Land Registration Authority, yung bagong titulo. You see? So then, we will tell the judge why we appear before him. So you have to tell the judge, Your Honor, I'm here because there is an accusation that is lodged against me. Oh. Lord, I appeal and I, uh, I agree with the accusation of the devil na ganito, na ganito ako. And I ask and I plead the blood of Jesus. Oh. Yung iba, they plead not guilty. Yung iba, they plead guilty. But to us, what we plead is what? The blood of Jesus. Because that is the most powerful blood that speak in the court, that give testimony in the courts. That's why after you plead the blood, the court will just, the judge will say, not guilty. So we don't appear in court to prove ourselves right. Tandaan natin. Sa korte sa lupa, kapag kinasuhan ka, you bring a witness to prove that you are not guilty. But in the courts of heaven, when the devil accuses us, he charges us, and he brings accusation against us, you don't prove that you are right. Why? Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Eh, hindi ko man pastor ginawa yan. Kahit na. Kasi sabi sa Bible, na, na halbo Ten Commandments, natupad mo yung sham, yung isa hindi mo nagawa, you are guilty of all. So that is the, ano, the law. Guilty of one, guilty of all. Kaya kahit hindi mo ginawa, pero ginawa ng ninuno mo, you're still guilty. That's why David and Daniel, when they go to the courts of heaven, they, when they prayed, they do what we call identificational repentance. Wala nga lang sa dictionary yan identificational repentance. They just repent in behalf of their family. Okay? So we appear in court in order to fight for justice. To fight the injustice that He has tried to hinder us in realizing the assignment that God has given us. We have an assignment eh. Oh, I'll give you an example. To start a church, alam nyo ba? Alam ko, mga pastor kayo. Hindi mo madali ang mag, magpastor. Especially kung pioneering. Oh, nung unang panahon, nung 80s, meron kaming alam na isang denominasyon, eh, napunta ron sa Bicol, sa amin. Ang tawag namin ay one-way ticket. They were sent by their denomination with one-way ticket and a two months allowance. Dapat after two months, meron ka ng sarili mong simbahan na nagtatites. Can you imagine that? Eh, hindi mahirap yun. Eh, wala tayong magagawa. Yun ang kanilang protocol eh. Yun ang kanilang uh, kinalakayang pamamaraan in building the kingdom of God. So, dahil nalaman namin yon, ako ang chairman ng pastoral movement, o sabi ko, mag-contribute na lang tayo. Pakainin natin, kawawa naman. You see my point? Oh. Hindi ganun kadali. Magastos. So, how would you do that? So, you have to go to the court for the injustice. Why? Pipigilan ni Satan yung mga tao para hindi maborn again. Pipigilan yung resources na dumating sa'yo para ano, magamit mo. Oh. 
Kaya nga doon sa ibang mga bansa, marami mga lalo sa Amerika, marami mga pastor na nagkikwit sa kanilang pagpapastor. It is because it is very expensive to maintain a ministry. Ano <laughs> ba 'yon? It's very expensive. Ako nga noon eh, every Sunday na lang, lagi ang tanong ko sa treasurer, magkano ang tithes and offering? <laughs> Why? Yung bill sa kuryente, ganito. Magsusweldo ka sa mga full-time workers, ganyan. O, yung allowance mo pa. O, kadalasan, yung pastor ang nahuhuli. Hmm. Magbibigay muna siya. Sabi niya, o sige, mauna na yung mga, ano, mga, mga ibang full-time worker. kahit konti na lang yung matera sa yung matera na lang ay yung akin. Oh. These are forms of injustices. We have an assignment that God gave us and the enemy will stop us realizing our assignment. Yun nga lang, magpastor ka nga lang eh. Oh, di ba? Oh. Pipigilan ka talaga, mararanasan mo 'yon, mararamdaman mo. Yun. And most of the time, It is the family of the pastor ang nagiging ano biktima. Sila yung nagiging biktima eh. Kaya nga you ask yung mga anak ng mga pastor. Tanong mo sa kanila, ko konti lang yung kung sila ay magpapastor din katulad ng tatay nila. Ko konti lang nagsas, nag, nagsasabing o oh, sige magpapastor din ako. One of the reason is this, they experience the poverty. the injustices sa pamilya niya. Hindi siya nakapag-aral dahil ano? Oh. Tapos, aawayin pa lang member. Oh, see? That is another form of injustice. So what you do? You don't quit. You go to the court. You bring the matter into the court of heaven. We don't plead in order to lift ourselves up. We don't plead in the court to ilip ang ating, ating sarili. But we plead for the honor of the King of Kings. If the honor of our King of Kings ang nakataya, we go there in the court. And we need to plead in behalf of our God and His kingdom. We are in court to honor Him. Tandaan niyo po. Not to be contentious. Here in a court in earth, Pag contentious ka, ikukontem ka, pakulong ka ng judge. And to stop the hindering of the fulfillment of destiny. That's the very purpose. That's the very reason we go there. We want to stop whatever operation na ginagawa ng kaaway in hindering our destinies. Hmm. Di ba nakakaawa? When I started the ministry, you know, ang aking love gift is 400 pesos. 350 pesos yung renta sa bahay. Oh. Sa awa ng missionary namin, binibigyan ako ng 1,000 pesos. Can you imagine? Paano magkakasa yun noong panahon na yun? 1988. Oh. But the grace of God is there. Oh. Eh, hindi pa naman namin ito alam. Now, na alam na namin, and we know our source is our Father, we, need, we don't need to worry. Sabi niya, but if anyone seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. 1 Corinthians 11.16 Even Paul said, Oh, you, didn't, you don't need to be contentious. Especially in the courts of heaven. We show respect to everyone who is present during the courtroom session. That's why, when you are there in the courtroom of heaven, mararamdaman mo ang presence ng kaaway. Why he is there? He is there because he is the accuser. He has to be there. Okay? So, the witnesses, The spirit of people made righteous who are in heaven and the angels is all, are also there. Okay? The enemy is also present. Sometimes with, with an entourage. Sometimes hindi yan mag-isa. May mga kasama yan. Okay? Kaya kung minsan, if you're a seer, mararamdaman mo yung ano, yung fear 
na makikita mo yung kaaway mo na andon. Oh. But the good thing is, they all show respect because we are in a court. They also show respect din. Hindi sila pwedeng maging contentious doon sa korte. Kaya dito, wala kang, ta- wala kang takot dapat. Hindi ka matatakot na magre-retaliate ang, ang kaaway laban sa iyo. Why? Because you are in the court of heaven. You are secured. The only way the enemy can touch you is when he has what? Found a favorable ruling from the court. Kaya di ba sabi ko sa inyo, ulitin ko, kahit nga dulo ng daliri mo, hindi niya pwedeng pakailaman. Even though he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy, he still need a legal ruling bago siya makagawa. He has to wait na mag-trading tayo sa kanya. Kapag tayo nakapag-trade sa kanya, he has now a legal right to destroy us, to attack us. Pero hanggat wala, ta, wala siyang legal right sa atin, wala siyang pwedeng gawin laban sa atin. You are all protected. So, he renders a verdict. Tandaan niyo po ang judge. The judge renders a verdict based on evidence, facts, and all the testimonies that are present during the court session. Same true here on earth. The judge will always gave a testimony or a decision based on what? On the testimony of the witnesses. So the fact that the enemy has caused tremendous damage in our lives weighs heavy for a judge. Alam niya yon, mabigat yon, kasi yung judge natin, tatay natin. So, alam ng Diyos yan. Okay? So when I state that the court session is emotionless, it doesn't mean that emotions are not weighed into considerations. Sorrow, pain, intense trauma are definitely a factor of the verdict of the judge. But he don't make decision only based on what? Emotion. His ruling is not based on his emotion, but or our or ours for that matter. Hindi rin nakabase doon sa ating nararamdaman. O, oh, dahil naawa lang sa atin ng Diyos. Hindi ho ganun. They are based on righteous, righteousness and justice. Why? The Bible says that, that the throne of God is what? The foundation of the throne of God is righteousness and justice. So we don't we don't receive preferential treatment. When you're in a court, you don't receive a preferential treatment. God cannot play favorites in a court session. Why? Because he's a judge. When someone is found guilty as charged, they will be convicted and receive his punishment. Diba? Ganon sa lupa. God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversary and he reserve wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. You see? Ganun siya ka katwid. Next, we address the judge. We don't wage war of words with our adversary. Tinan niyo po yung example niya ng prayer sa Luke chapter 18. The widow didn't even talk to his adversary. She only talks to the judge. So we don't wage a war of words with our adversary. Hindi ba ito word war? Kaso lang, yung natutunan natin na spiritual warfare ay ginawa natin na word war. We keep on shouting. What we do is we address the heavenly judge and present our case to him. 
We don't talk to the devil. Never talk to the devil. And never talk to the demons. Bakit? Pag tinanong mo ba kung ang pangalan niya, magsasabi ba ng totoo yan? Come on. They will not tell you the truth. Because they are all liars. Di ba? Sa panahon ni Jesus, yung mga demons, pinatatahimik niya eh. Kaya pag may nakita kayo, may narinig kayo ng teaching na nagtuturo na kinakausap ang demonyo, you have to run. It's a very, ano, walang biblical basis yan. We place the verdict about our case into His hands. Siya ang magdi-decide, not us. Because we are not the judge, eh. He is the judge. We don't help God. We also ask for compensation for the things that were done to us. Or unto those who have behalf, we are standing there. So if you are praying for your family or for someone that got sick, so there is what? Injustice. You need the compensation. Oh, magbayad ang enemy. Di ba sabi sa batas ng Biblia? The enemy, pag na, na huling magnakaw, he has to pay how many times? Seven times. Oh. Seven times. You have to pay. Seven times. Kahit maibenta mo ang bahay mo o ang mga ari-arian mo. That's what the law says. Applicable din yan sa kaawa. Hindi lang yan sa atin. Hindi lang yan sa panahon ng Israel. It's a, it's a governing law of the kingdom of God. We can express our emotions. Hindi masama yun. You can cry. But we do this to our Father, the judge of all the earth. And He will verdict in just way. Kahit ka pa umiyak, o hindi ko umiyak, your father as a judge will render a verdict in a just way. He cannot be partial. It does not allowed by the kingdom of God. So when we appear in the courts of heaven before the judge, Satan will try to do anything to silence us in the court. You have to remember that. They will do everything to silence you in the court or even to intimidate you. He knows that when the judge rules in our favor, his power on earth will be broken. Specifically, his power on your life will be broken. In your family will be broken. In your city, in your local congregations, it will be broken. So he tries to motion for the judge to declare our case inadmissible. May time, ganun ang gagawin niya. So sabi niya, Lord, the case against me is not admissible in this court. Uh, remember the high priest Joshua appeared in Zechariah chapter 3 before the angel of the Lord. And Satan was standing at his side to oppose him. If it is the angel of the Lord, katabi niya, Ito si Satan. At andito si Joshua the high priest. He is standing at the right hand of the angel of the Lord. And is accusing Joshua the high priest of sin. Ayan. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan is standing at his right hand. He was saying, nakaharap. Kaya he's at the right hand. To oppose him. Remember, Joshua the high priest is in the court of heaven presenting a case for, the, for Israel, not for himself. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. This is not a brand flock from fire. Is this not a brand flock from fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filled garments and was standing before the angel. What happens? There is an important lesson to learn here. When we are in the courts of heaven, it is the judge who rebuke Satan. Even the angel of the Lord did not rebuke directly Satan. Ang sabi ng angel of the Lord is this, this. The Lord rebuked thee. Remember Michael? when he was at, with us a dispute with the angels, Archangel Michael, about the body of Moses. 
Archangel Michael did not bring a slanderous accusation against the devil. Kaya, kung ako po sa inyo, huwag nyo na hong gagawin yan. Naghahanap lang kayo ng away. Not even the angel of the Lord or archangel, archangel does it. You address the heavenly judge and you leave the rebuking to him. Di ba anong turo ni Jesus sa prayer? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. It is not us that would deliver ourselves from the devil. We ask the judge. You know the word temptation there? In Greek, means trial. Sabi niya, lead us not into trial. A courtroom trial. But deliver us from the accuser. Yun po ang uh, literal translation doon sa Aramic. So you address the heavenly judge. It is the heavenly judge that would what? Rebuke. So he will deal with the accusation that Satan present in court. And we must not become irrational. Let's stop our foolish slanderers. And daming mga Christian, they are slanderers of the heavenly beings who from the powerlessness, yan, ito ang daylan, because of their powerlessness and prostration, speak all kinds of foolish things against Satan's and his powers. You have to understand, our enemy is a lawyer He is a very intelligent guy. Kaya you cannot underestimate or even overestimate the devil. So yung mga gumagawa lang yan ng mga Christian, yung mga ignorant. Second, yung mga irrational. Because of their powerlessness. They try to defeat the devil. Archangel Michael who didn't rebuke Satan. Nakuha niyo po? So the unrighteousness of Joshua is dealt with by giving him a new garments. Ganun lang, simple. O, sabi ni Lord, palitan ang damit niya. Bigyan siya ng bagong damit. At binigyan pa siya ng commission ni Lord. Sabi niya, if you continue obey my word, you will stand here, katulad ng mga ito, ng mga judge na ito na andito ng mga jury, you will stand and you're going to take care of my court. Yun ang bili ni Lord kay, ano, kay Joshua. He was promoted. So did you notice that Joshua didn't speak even one word during all of this? He did not speak. When we are in the heavenly courts, other voices will speak on our behalf. Don't worry, someone would speak for us especially your offering, it has a voice. The blood of Jesus has a voice. When Satan accuses you, God will give you a new garment. When we walk in humility and meekness, appearing humbly before Him. Joshua wasn't appearing in the heavenly court for himself. He entered to atone for the sins of a nation of Israel in order that Israel might fulfill her destiny on earth. Nakuha niyo po? Joshua was not in the court for his personal thing. So the power and authority of the kingdom of heaven is based on righteousness, righteous respect, and application of its laws and regulations. Ganyan ang kingdom ni Lord. There is what we call a legal, uh, spiritual realm is what? operates in legality. That's why the Bible is, is the governing law. You cannot just go to the court to someone at idemanda yung tao na wala ka mang kaso na isasampa sa kanya. The Bible tells us that the foundation of the throne of God is what? Righteousness and justice. If God would give us preference in His court, He would break His own laws. Because the laws of God are what? He cannot be 
partial. He will always be impartial. And God has given us strict instruction and in how the court's application of the law in Israel must be fulfilled. May mga protocol nga. Di ba? Oh, example nito. You shall not circulate a false report. Oh, di ba sa atin? Ang daming mga fake news. Yung mga MSM or yung mga traditional media, mainstream media, ang dami nila mga circulate na false report. Do not put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. You shall not follow a crowd to do evil, nor shall testify in dispute so as to turn aside after many to pervert justice. You shall not show partiality to a poor man in his, display, in his dispute. So if you meet enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying under its burden and you would refrain from helping it, you shall surely help him with it. Why? You shall not pervert the judgment of your poor in, in this dispute. Keep yourself far from false matter. Do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. And you shall take no bribe, for the bribe blinds the discerning and perverts the word of the righteous. Minsan natatawa ako eh. Ang dami sa mga mainstream media, talagang kung mag-comment tungkol sa gobyerno natin, ay wagas. Kahit mali-mali na, paninindigan pa rin nila. Now I realize kung bakit. Kasi itong mga, itong mga journalist na ito, nabayaran na po ito. Kaya kahit magmukha silang bobo, or, you know, poor gimme for the word, tanga, gagawin nila. You know why? Because they already bribe eh. Binayaran na sila. Eh si Duterte nga, walang ginawang mabuti sa kanila. Lahat masama. Imagine nyo yan. Oh. Almost 18 months na lang. Tapos na yung kanyang term. Oh. Eh hindi nga siya tinigilan ng mga traditional media. Oh. And I realize why these traditional media are speaking things like that. False report. Why? Because they were what? They were bribed. So we come to understand that people can see properly when they accept a bribe and pervert words. That's right. Nakakalungkot. They cannot really see. Kasi nga, they were already bribed. Bayad na sila. That's why they have to bring the, the ano, uh, a proof na may ginawa sila. Oh. If you still struggle with seeing, ito yung sa mga lahat ng Kristiyano, in the spiritual dimension, ask the Holy Spirit if this is the reason why you are not able to see. Yan ang isang pwede. It could be that one of your ancestors has given a false testimony or took bribe in order to get an innocent man convicted. Mabigat yun. Baka nangyari yan, that's why yung buong lineage mo affected. Okay? And the enemy uses the laws and regulation from God to hinder us. I'll give you an example. Diba the law says, sabi ni Lord, if you will not obey God, I will send pestilence. Now, ginamit ni Satan yung salita na yan, ni Lord. That if you will not obey God, the Lord will send pestilence. Eh, si Satan na nagpadala ng COVID-19. May magawa ba si, si Lord? Wala. Kasi merong ano, may legal right. Kaya ang trabaho natin na eklisiya, we have to go to the courts of heaven and to represent the Philippines and bring a case against the enemy. Conclusion. God the judge has laid down rules of conduct for proper protocol in the courts. It is the judge who laid down the rules. That's why in heaven, you will be learning a lot of, a lot of protocols. 
when you go there. Okay? Pero, that rule should not hinder us from going to the courts of heaven. These rules are not only applicable in an earthly court, but also in the heavenly courts. There are rules. So when we enter His court for our personal cases, we won't be punished when we make mistakes. Tandaan niyo po yan. This one, I want to balance it. Even though there are protocols in heaven, but God will not contempt you if you make a mistake entering the courts of heaven. God will not going to punish you. Because God knows we're just learning this truth. Before His throne, He will give us mercy. Not only for what we have done on earth, but also for the lack of understanding of proper protocol. Tandaan po natin yan. God will what? Give us grace. Eh kung ang kaaway nga eh, pinaharap niya sa kanya eh, sa korte, how much more us? Diba? Yeah? Our Father is really excited, tandaan niyo po, when we appear before Him in order to bring justice to the earth. This is our first time experience in the courts of heaven, 2012, uh, 2015. The things that we heard there, sabi ng mga ano, ng mga nasa langit. At last, may nakaintindi din. Uh, Kapag uh, nag-training kami, especially yung seers training to open the spiritual eyes, ako, ang experience ko, iba doon sa experience ng yung mga seer. Yung ibang mga seer, they can see talagang very colorful. Okay? For me, iba. I don't see that way. I only discern or impress in my spirit what is happening. Nakuha niyo po? Oh. So, nung mga unang tinuturo namin to 2015, after the sessions, we will have our practical applications. How? Okay, let's do a practical application. Let's go to the courts of heaven. Eh, hindi pa namin alam yung protocol. So, what we will do, O sabi ko, practicein nyo ha, o yung nakita nyo, ano yung nakita nyo sa, sa langit. And then we have some inquiry, tatanong natin, ano yung sinasabi ng langit, ng korte about these particular issues. Isa doon sa aming pinagpraktikum noon ay yung, sino ang susunod na presidente? Okay? So, and one time, after that, nag-testimony yung mga galing, yung mga dinala ni Lord doon sa court sa langit. Sabi nung isa, Pastor, alam nyo, I was brought by God in the courts of heaven. Kaso lang, pagpasok ko, there was a big angels that is guarding the gate. And then he asked me, sabi niya, anong ginagawa nyo rito? Sabi, to, sabi niya, eh, Pinapunta po kami rito ni Pastor Dante kasi practicum namin ng courts of heaven. Sabi doon ng angel sa kanya, o sige, pasok na. <laughs> Then pag, baba, pag ano, katapos, ikukwento siya, ay Pastor, kilala ka pala doon. <laughs> so my point here is, we appear before there, before the courts of heaven, to bring justice not only for us, but for the earth. Kaya yung maraming mga siya nakikita nila pagdating nila doon sa korte sa langit, sabi na, Pastor, ang daming mga tao na andoon. Oh. Kaya that's his reality. Because if you look at uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 10, yung mga spirit being, thousands and even millions who minister to the Lord. Oh. So when we do, we allow Him to speak justice in our lives and to bless us so that He can give us what He desires for us. But be aware that our God is not a God of chaos, but a God of order. But the question is, whose order? 
It should be God's order, not man's order. Sometimes, di ba sa simbahan, uh, sinasabi ng pastor, oh, God is a God of order. Yes, I agree with you, God is a God of order. But the basis of your order is what? Is it man's order or God's order? Nakon po, may pagkakaiba yan. It might be sa tao, you are out of order. But in God, you are in order. Nakon niya po. So that's why you have to hear from the Lord. So what? let's see the practical applications. Akala niyo tapos na, no? Hindi pa. Kalahati pa lang yun. <laughs> oh, kalahating slide pa lang eh. Oh. <laughs> 30 minutes pa. Okay. What is the strategy of the adversary? Our adversary is not impressed by our reputation on earth. Pagkatandaan ninyo. Sa korte sa langit, hindi tinitingnan ni Satan ng mga jablo o sino man sila yung reputasyon mo dito sa lupa. Ikaw man ay pastor, bishop, apostle, prophet. Wala siyang pakialam. Tandaan nyo yan. Nangangatog lang siya sa takot pag ang nagsasubmit doon ay kilala niya na siya ay anak ng Diyos. Because our rulership is based on our, our sonship. Our kingship is based on sonship. You cannot rule as a king until you experience sonship or you are walking as a son. So our adversary is not impressed by our reputation on earth. Kahit bishop ka, pagtatawanan ka lang sa korte ng kaaway. That's why I'm telling you, you have to learn this one. You have to learn this one. Kasi wala siyang pakialam wala, sa reputasyon mo kung sino ka dito sa lupa. Wala siyang pakialam. Think about the sons of Skiba. Di ba, sons of Skiba, mga paris, anak ng Parseo yan? Di ba? Nagkakas out sila ng demonyo. Eh, nakita ni, si, ni, ano, ni Satan. Sa amin niya, I, sabi niya, I cast you out in Jesus' name na tinuturo ni Paul. O, oh, di ba? Yun ang, yun ang sabi ng mga sons of Skiba. Ano sabi ni <laughs> mga demonyo? Aba, kilala ko si Jesus. Kilala ko din si Paul. Pero kayo, hindi ko kayo kilala. O, ano nangyari doon sa mga demonyo? Lumihipat yung demonyo doon sa pitong alak ni Skiba. At diba? And they run wild at tubad. You see? Kahit, kahit anak ka na ni ganito, anak ka ni ganyan, the devil is not impressed by our reputation on earth. He's only impressed who we are in Christ. You should know that. So when you think that you can beat your adversary in the courts of heaven just because you have heard the existence of it, you are gravely mistaken. Akala nyo matatalo nyo si Satan dahil nalaman nyo na ang tungkol sa courts of heaven? Hindi. You should practice this one. Sa totoo lang, may mga bagay kaming nire-request na hanggang ngayon hindi pa dumarating. Why? It might be there a reason na hinihintay pa niya yung sagot ng kaaway. Tandaan niyo, he's a, he's, a, he's a just God. Hindi lang tayo ang kakampihan ng Diyos. He will make decision not because we are His sons. Di ba? He will make decision because of the evidence that we have submitted before the court. So dahil porke nalaman mo na, ang court, ano, narinig mo na, oh. that's why ito po ay a continuous application and walking Even I myself, I can say, I know everything. That's why nag-enroll pa nga ako eh. Doon sa isang American, ano, um, tawag dito, seer na nagtuturo, I buy her book. Bumili ako ng libro niya eh. And then sabi ko, eh nag-offer siya ng course. 
So I pay. Tapos sabi ko, mag-aral ako. Sabi niya, no need, I'll just send it to you na lang. Yung video at saka yung manual. <laughs> sabi niya, I plant a seed for the Philippines. Can you imagine that? But I want to learn more. Naku, ano ibig sabihin? It is a spiritual dimension. Everyone there sees right through you. They can see inside of you kung ano yung meron dyan. Naalala ko si Robert Miss noon, eh, kukwendo siya eh. First time siya humarap doon sa court in heaven, nakita niya mga poste, alalaking pillars. And he tried to ano, magtago. Kasi sabi niya, natatakot siya eh. Oh. Doon sabi sa kanya ng ama, Look, the pillars are transparent. I can still see you. <laughs> Kahit magtago ka dyan sa poste, eh, transparent yung mga pillars na yan. You get the point? Everyone there sees right through you. Even the devil. Kaya wala kang pwedeng itago doon. Kaya pag inakusahan ka, aminin mo na lang. Di ba? It is impossible to hide behind your reputation. Kasi mo, ay, pastor ako, o bishop ako, ay, hindi ka pwede magtago pagdating sa korte sa langit. Nakuha niyo po? We are all bare before the courts. So, every thought you have, every deed you have done, and every word spoken are fully displayed and open on that table. The devil has a record of our sin. Kaya, what I learned, I have to admit, Lord, I did it. Lord, forgive me. So, I don't need to justify. Kaya sabi ni Paul, we are not ignorant of his devices. Ibig sabihin, alam ni Paul how the enemies operates. Bukod doon, we have a wonderful counselor, di ba? Isaiah chapter 9 ba yun? A child is born and a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. We only enter a courtroom when it is our profession or when we are involved in a court case. Tama po. Dito sa lupa, you only enter the court kapag may kaso ka, may dinimanda sa'yo. Or, you only enter the court if that is your work, if that is your profession. Sa atin, mga kapatid, sa korte sa langit, dalawa, Entering the court is our professions because we are called by God to intercede for our nations. So we go there in the court in behalf of our nations. Uh, second, we go there also in the court because the enemy has an outstanding accusation against us. So what we do? We appeal before the court. When you have a case, it all starts with a conversation with your lawyer, di ba? Pag may kaso ka, anong gagawin mo? mag ka ng lawyer. So you talk about what's going to happen from the beginning of the trial until it is end. Okay? Thankfully, we too have a wonderful counselor. Ang tawag ng Biblia sa kanya, yung ating advocate, si Jesus Christ, is a wonderful counselor who help us in the preparation of our heavenly court case. E dito, pwede kang matulog. Kasi pag kuminsan yung abogado mo ay hindi marunong, nako, sigurado. Hindi ka makakatulog niyan. Pero kung kay Kristo, siyang abogado mo, oh, sigurado. sabi ni Lord, oh sige, matulog ka na. Don't worry, I know the court. The spirit of counsel will, sta- will also stand at our side and help us with the preparation of our case, the Holy Spirit. So don't hesitate to prayfully ask His help. Lord, I know there is a, a charge against me in the court how I'm going to appear before them. So you ensure that your pleas are based on the promises of God in the Bible. When I say based on the promises of God, it should be what? Based on the... Nasa dulo ng dila ko. based on governing law. 
dito sa lupa, ang judge, hindi siya pwede mag-decide ng anumang kaso ng walang governing law. Example, any case na napapaloob doon sa tinatawag na um, revised penal code. Nagnakaw, pumatay, marami yung mga kaso na andyan niya sa revised penal code. So, pag wala doon sa revised penal code, paano kakakasuhan? Kung yung ikakaso sa iyo ay wala pang, wala pang governing law. Same true. When you file a case before the courts of heaven, make it sure yung plea mo is based on what? The governing law or the promises of God. Next is judgment of a judge. The heavenly judge can render his verdict based on his love and feelings for you. Tandaan niyo po lagi yan. God love us so much. But as a judge, he cannot just render judgment based on his feeling for us. He rules based on facts, based on evidence, and the statement that are presented during the court session. I tell you, 1973, Roe versus Wade. It happens in America, the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court make a ruling, made a ruling that abortion is a constitutional right of every American citizen. Tell me, ano kaya ang naramdaman ng Diyos dyan? Bakit nangyari yon? Hindi ba nakialam ang Diyos? I believe yes. Kaso lang, may legal right ang enemy. You get my point? Kaya may mga nangyayari sa ating lipuna na pikit mata lang ang Diyos. Wala siyang magawa. Why? The enemy has able to what? Get a legal right. He's a judge. He cannot just rule based on his feeling for us. Palagay nyo kay anong naramdaman ni Lord nangyari yon. Alam nyo ba sa survey? Since 1973 to 2015, how many babies in America were killed by abortion? Almost 69 million. Or 60 million 900,000. Ganon karami yung namatay. Palagay mo, hindi concern si Lord doon? Concern si Lord. But the problem is, legality. Nakuha niyo pwede sabihin? That's why we have to learn this one and bring it before the, before the judge. When the verdict rendered, new evidence can no longer easily change the verdict. Like what happened, yung kinikwento ko sa inyo, Roe versus Wade. The Bible sometimes says that the Lord causes a plague. Diba? Bakit? Because the law says ganito, governing law says, if you disobey God, if you worship other God, God will send you what? A plague. So what happens? The enemy used that word against us. <laughs> oh. Why? The enemy has a legal right over the Philippines. Eh, dapat nga. Matagal na tayong nauna na nakalaya sa covid kung pinayagan ng gobyerno yung pabunan anti-viral. Oh. May legal right pa ang enemy. Kaya ang ginawa nga natin, we make a petition in the courts of heaven about the pabunan. We did it last October ata. But ahead of time, we, we made a petition, I think in February, nung pumutok yung uh, COVID-19. But up to now, it's still in the process. But God gave us an assurance na it is the Philippines that would what? Will be released from this. Oh. Kaya nga, pansinin nyo, may ginagawa ang Diyos eh. Padelay-delay ang ano, ang, ang vaccine. Hmm. May ginagawa ang Diyos. Okay. God doesn't want to cause a flake. But He is bound by the protocol of His own court and the laws of his kingdom. 
main laws of the kingdom eh. Sabi niya, if you disobey God, if you worship idols, other gods, the flake will come upon you. Hmm. Kanina nga, dalawang beses naglindol kanina ng umaga dito sa Dabao. Hmm. And na, nabasa ko sa, napalood ko sa video sa YouTube, na karamihan noon ay mga man-made. He can change it when he preside as judge in the courts of heaven. He can change his verdict even when the outcome hurts him. Nakuha niyo po? He cannot change it. Kahit masaktan siya. Eh, he, a righteous judge eh. This is why the Lord becomes upset when he finds that no one is standing in the gap for a nation. Di ba nung hinahanap niya? At least what? One intercessor. One intercessor lang. Because in the kingdom of God, you don't need 50% plus one. Di ba? Anong sabi sa New Testament? When two or three gathers in my name, I am in their needs. Oh. Majority na kay Lord John. Sabi niya, I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land and that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. You see? God is upset when He doesn't found an intercessor. Kasi wala siya magagawa. Why? The law says, the heavens belong to God, but the earth was given to man. So, even though God is a powerful God, He created the heavens and the earth, He gave what? Restraining order. There was law. Governing law. Binig, nagbigay siya ng governing law na ano, hindi siya pwedeng makialam sa lupa nang walang permiso ang tao. Even the devil, I tell you, hindi siya makaoperate dito na wala siyang taong gagamitin. And the reason why malaya siya nakakooperate sa Pilipinas, sa mundo, is because they have some human agents siyang ginagamit. There are people who what? Continually worshiping Him, offer Him blood sacrifice. That's why He was what? Becomes more powerful. Kasi maraming mga tao nag-trading sa Kanya. Maraming mga tao nagbibigay, nakikipag-trade sa Kanya. So when no one appears in court to plead for a nation, province, or a city, the judge can do anything else but to allow his enemy to activate a curse. Nakuha niya po? That's why, anong tawag sa atin? Intercessor. We have to what? Magbantay. Di ba? So, but isn't Jesus pleading for our nation in heaven? Yes! That's true. But to render a verdict in heaven, there must be a witness on earth that testify together with Christ in heaven. Di ba sabi, Lord, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the word of God may be established. Eh, dadalawa lang yung witness doon. The, fa- uh, the Holy Spirit and Jesus, kailangan ka niya. He needs you to witness before God. That's why you have to present. A case. So John tells in Revelation that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Jesus is testifying in heaven, but he needs what? Two or three witnesses. So when Jesus is testifying, he encourages us to be his fellow witnesses. Diba? How do you overcome the enemy? Diba? Revelation chapter 12, you overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Nakuha niya po? The word, of, the word of our testimony. We do this by letting our voice be heard in the courts of heaven and through our prophecy on earth. Jesus is testifying in heaven. And when he testified, that is the spirit of prophecy. When the prophet heard the testimony of Jesus in heaven, what the prophet said, he broadcast it here on earth. 
but He needs a witness. He needs us. Earth and heaven must become one. That's why God is looking for the ecclesia. It is the ecclesia that would what? Witness before God. Yes, Lord, I agree with you, Lord, that the enemy has been doing this thing to our town, to our city. Oh. The earth and heaven must become one. The council in heaven and the council on earth must agree in order to give the verdict of heaven legal force on earth. Kaya hindi makap- makapakialam ang Diyos eh. Kasi walang magwi-witness. If it is true, who then is testifying on earth on behalf of Satan? If that is true, so ibig sabihin, may nagtitestify din on behalf of Satan. The strongest testimony that support the case of Satan in the courts of heaven are the testimony that we Christians give. Huh? Ibig mo sabihin, nagtitestify kami in favor of the devil. Yes, when we speak badly about a person or you slander or you gossip about our brother or a leader in the church, then our testimony is recorded in heaven. Tayo mismo ang nagtetestify in favor of the devil. That's why sabi ni Lord. You have to forgive. Diba? Love your enemy. Love your neighbor. If you cannot love him as your neighbor, love him as your enemies. Our adversary, ulitin ko, is not impressed by our reputation on earth. May mga certain reputation tayo dito sa lupa. Pero pagdating sa langit, He is not impressed. Now, let's see the components of a court case. First, when you go to a court, you have to describe the injustice that you experience. When you file a lawsuit against the devil, di ba? Si Jean Decode, di ba? Alias lang niya yun eh. Di ba? Napanood niyo siguro yung video na pinopost namin. Si Jean Decode. He filed a petition in the courts of heaven. There can be many reasons to present a case for justice in an earthly court. You go to the court because you're convinced that injustice has been done to you. But in general, the party that loses the lawsuit has to pay for the cost of the trial. Alam niyo ba? Kaya yung iba ayun na lang mag uh, magdemanda kasi sabi niya pag nagdemanda ako natalo ako ako pa magbabayad ng expenses ng lawyer sa kabila nakuha niyo magbumulta pa ako so everyone has the right to present their case before a judge that's why the lawyer will just always advise you sa sabi ng lawyer oy makipagareglo ko na lang i give you an example there is a ano uh, blogger na sinabihan ng isang blogger na pangit. Babae yung vlogger na yon sinabihan ng isang lalaki na pangit. Nako nyo? Pangit! <laughs> Anong ginawa ng itong babae na ito? Nagdimanda ng libel for telling for somebody na sinabihan siya ng pangit. Eh, alam mo naman, beauty is what? Depends upon the beholder. Beauty is re, ano, relative. There is no such thing as ano, a standard what is beautiful and what is not beautiful. Well, what happened? <laughs> the court denies her case. Ano nangyari? Dilig, naging legal tuloy na siya ay pangit. Nakuha niyo po, 
when the court said, the court made a ruling, no, that's not libel. Eh, so, 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 ano nangyari? Sinabi na ng judge, napangit ka talaga! <laughs> ah! Sabi ko, sana hindi ka na lang nagdemanda. Nagtanong ka na lang doon sa, eh, yung lawyer niya siguro. Kailangan ng pera. <laughs> So everyone has the right to present their case before a judge, but you have to be careful. O diba? O. Oh. Kaya tuloy, naging legal ngayon yung pagiging pangit mo. <laughs> This is also true in the courts of heaven. You have to be very careful. Okay? We as citizens of the kingdom of heaven have obtained the right to present our case before the heavenly judge. You have the right. Okay? And we see this especially in the life of David who regularly appealed to God to vindicate him. Why? For how many years? I think 14 years he being hunted by what? By Saul. At may mga pinapadalang assassin si Saul just to kill David. Naalala niyo yun? Oh. And most of the time he goes to God as Not as a father, but as a judge. Kaya mababasa mo sa Book of Psalms yung imprecatory prayer niya. And he is asking justice for the injustices na kanyang ano, nararanasan. Psalm 9.4 For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. See, everyone of us has a right to go to the judge. Okay? Hear a just cause, sabi ni David. O Lord, attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. Okay. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O oh, deliver me from the deceitful and the unjust man. Psalm 43. Essentially, you present your case in the court of heaven for what purpose? To be vindicated. Okay? Do you realize that the prayers you pray in your inner chamber are heard in the heavenly courtroom? It is heard. Our prayers are heard in the heavenly courtroom. It is important that you know precisely what injustice has been done to you. You have to know what injustice. You are not approaching the judge in order to tell him that you are sad. Or that you are very angry with someone. Or sasabihin mo, Lord, sinabihan ako ng pangit daw ako. <laughs> Ang masama yan pag naging legal yan. So, the heavenly judge is not a church counselor who caress you on the head. Uy, kawawa ka naman. Oh, hindi galon si Lord. He renders a verdict based on the laws of His kingdom. Nakuha niyo po? Hindi sa church counselor. He is a judge. So you have to prove in the court session that, you, that your claim has legal ground. May legal basis ba yung claim mo? You cannot just go to the court and file a frivolous cases. A frivolous cases is like this. Halimbawa, Uh, mag-boyfriend ni girlfriend, naghiwalay. Pagkatapos yung sila yung naghiwalay, yung lalaki nakakuha ng bago. At dahil siya nakakuha ng bago, pinupost niya yung picture nila doon sa Facebook. Nasaktan ngayon yung ano, yung dati niyang girlfriend. So pumunta siya sa judge at sabi niya, Judge, sumingi ako ng restraining order. Pagbawalan niyo po yung aking boyfriend, yung aking ex. 
na huwag magpo-post ang picture na kanyang bagong girlfriend. Kasi nasasaktan ako. Nagsiselos ako. Palagay mo, sasagutin ng judge yun? Bibiyan nga yung justisya? Hindi. Sabi niya, wala kang legal basis. That is a frivolous case. You have no legal basis. Eh, comply mo dahil hindi mo yan asawa. Pangalawa, break na kayo. So that means that the injustice that been inflicted upon you must be biblically grounded. Nakuha niyo po? That is why you need to prepare yourself. Now, this is my advice. When you go to the court, just focus on a single issue lang. You need to keep things simple. Especially when you are beginning to pray like this. Okay? During your first formal court session, you present just one case. A single issue to say to the judge. Lord, like for example, Lord, I am sick. That is the single issue. Okay? Don't try to deal with all the injustices that happen in your life. Simula ni ikaw ay maliit pa hanggang ngayon. Wag, Ang dami po noon. Yung lahat ng binugbog ka lang, tatay mo, galito, ganyan. Wag, Isa-isa lang. <laughs> So don't engage with the most complicated case. Just start with a simple one. Ano yung mga simple one? Oh. Eh kami noon eh, pinasimula sa amin Lord, medyo complicated eh. Election. <laughs> Kaya nga sa opisina no, pinagtatawanan ako eh. Sasabihin sa akin, Yes, si Pastor Dante, 30 yan. Oh. Wala, wala lang akong imik. Sabi ko, alam nyo, I already brought it into the courts of heaven and they answer us. And the reason why ganyan ako, not because gusto ko itong mama na ito, it's because I heard from heaven that he will be the next president. Oh. You may not agree with him, you may not agree the way he do things, but you have to agree with God. Nawa niyo po, siya ang judge eh. Wala tayong magagawa. So that's our problem. Kasi we have, sabi ko, meron tayong mga tinatawag na uh, political biases. O oh, wala, hindi naman masama yun. You can have your own political view. Walang problema yun. But in the courts of heaven, your political view is not important. It's not important. That's why when you go to the courts of heaven and you inquire, you have to believe Him, Lord. O lalo ngayon, malapit ng 2020, October 2021, magpa-file na ng certificate candidacy yung mga kandidato. Kaya dapat ang body of Christ, ang eklesiya ay mag-appear na sa langit. At sabihin nila, Lord, sino po ang iyong pinili na magiging presidente ng Pilipinas? Oh. Wala tayong mindset. O wala tayong iniisip na gusto natin? Why? Because it's much more intelligent and much more better to understand the plan of God for the Philippines. So, just begin simply so that you can learn how the court protocol works. Okay? So, the moment you start the experience to experience God as a judge of all the earth and He begins to vindicate you, your faith will grow. The good thing is, it will grow. Ah! Susunod, nadadalhin mo na ngayon, yun ang medyo malaki. Kaya pag may lumapit sa'yo, Pastor, ay, oh, sabi niyo, Sister, meron po akong problema. Oh, siya, siya, mahang kita. Let's go to the court. Madali lang yan sa court. Eh. Last, uh, la, this week, last week lang ha, somebody called me up at sabi niya, Pastor, may problema ako tukol sa finances, ganyan, 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 ganyan. So, okay, sabi ko, let's go to the court. Let's deal with the accusation. So, what I did, I made her a, a petition. Gumawa na ako ng petition, sinend ko sa kanya. Alam mo, hindi pa niya na ipagpipray, may sagot na ang Diyos. Then, ang tanong niya sa akin, Pastor, dapat pa bang ituloy sa ko? Yes. Dapat madil totally yung ano yung accusation laban sa iyo. 
bring it before the court. Who knows what will happen? Oh. Eh, yun nga, hindi pa nga niya sinasabi, ginagawa ko pa lang, eh, sumagot na ang Diyos, eh. Ang bilis. <laughs> you can see? Because God knows the heart of the person. So, you will become more experienced and create a bigger frame of reference. So, another thing that you have to uh, identify is who has wronged you. Sino ba nakasakit sa'yo? Everyone has experienced a time when they didn't get what they thought they were entitled to. Marami po niyan. Karamihan na ay they thought makukuha nila ito sa korte, pero hindi. You can experience injustice even in church. Leaders can and will make mistake, or other church member could treat you unjustly. Kaya yung iba, umaalis na lang, di ba? Oh. It is not always easy to talk about the things that happen in your life. Nasaktan ka ng pastor, sinabihan ka ng masama ng pastor, or somebody, a friend of yours, sinabihan ka ng ganito, na-offend ka, ganyan. So marami yan. Okay? So you may have experienced a great trauma with so much pain that you decided to keep silent about it. Di ba? Karamihan ganun. So, the perpetrator might be so intimidating that you don't even dare to tell anyone. Naramdam mo na ini-intimidate ka ng kaaway, the spirit being, na kahit ikwento mo o magpa-counsel ka, hindi mo gagawin. Okay? Baka nahihiya ka, baka malaman ng iba. But as long as you are silent, the heavenly judge can render a verdict and vindicate you. Same here on earth. Di ba? The police, the public attorney, and the judge can only act after you have pressed charges. So yung, yung judge, hindi siya makakagawa ng anumang decision or verdict against our enemy, against your enemy, kung wala kang ano, ipa-file na ano, charges. I'll give an example, yung mga cases of rape. Karamihan noon, yung iba, hindi na nag file ng demanda. Bakit? Ayaw nila na ano, may skandalo pa. Di ba? May skandalo eh, malalaman niya ng buong bayan. Ay, si ganito na rape. Oh. Di ba? Iniiwasan nila yon. Even the family will discourage the the members of the family. Sasabihin niya, huwag ka na mag-file ng case. Kasi nakakahiya. Oh, di ba? So, but on the other hand, you could make the mistake of talking to everybody about the alleged crime that had been committed against you. Ito naman yung opposite. Ito yung chismis mo. Okay? So what you do? You need to prepare a list and write down those you hold responsible for the injustice. So the first thing you need to do, if you experience injustice from people, you have to write down the names. Okay? Think about family members, friends, colleagues at work, or leaders in the church. Sino yung nag-cost ng trauma, pain na meron ka ngayon? Okay? So, write it down. Okay? Don't start blaming the demons or Satan. Don't blame muna sa kanya. Don't, don't, even though we know that he's at this... Nasa likod siya nito, pero do not blame. Okay? Don't start blaming. Wait. So you point out who you think is responsible and let the heavenly judge deal with the spiritual powers behind them. If the pain causes by a person, there is a spirit behind there. So, but don't deal with the spirit. Let God deal with the spirit. How about the person? Yun ang trabaho mo. You ask forgiveness for the mistake that you have made and you bless the people who have hurt you. Hindi sinabi ng Bible na darin mo sa korte yung tao na yun na nakasakit sa'yo. Maliwanag ang sabi ng Bible, sabi niya, forgive. If you don't forgive, the Father in heaven will not forgive you. So you have to ask for forgiveness. For what? Keeping yung ano, yung uh, nag-keep ka ng bitterness against that person. Because forgiveness is a legal action. Tandaan niyo po. Not a consequence of emotion. 
Hindi po yan nakabase sa emotion. Kaya di ba sabi ng Bible, forgive from the heart. Why? It is a legal action. Our emotion demands instant retribution kasi. Kaya ang gusto ni Lord, you forgive from the heart, not from your emotions or from your mind. But when we forgive others, we place the right for retribution in the hands of God. In the hands of the righteous judge, you give the ano, you give God a legal right na ikaw ay ipagtanggol niya. Nako niyo po. And remember, he will judge with the righteous judgment. Siya ang mas nakakaalam. And then you describe what happened. Every time someone hurts you, you can leave some it leaves some deep wounds in you. Okay? That's why it's very important to be precise when you describe this injustice. Describe what happened. Bring it before the court. Does it have a biblical foundation? When you present a case, the legal grounds can only be found in violation of the law, of the kingdom, as described in the scripture, not in your emotional state. Baka ang kinakaso mo sa kanya, nasaktan ka, wala naman siyang na-violate na ano, na law of the kingdom. Example, nag si pastor. in ka dahil na-mention niya yung tithes and offering. Na feeling mo, sinasabihan ka niya na ikaw ay inagdanakaw ng tithes. Wala naman siyang na-violate na laws of the kingdom. It's your emotion who reacted. Di ba? Your emotion are important, remember that. But they aren't decisive when it comes to the issue of guilt. Hindi po emotion ang nag-decide ng guilt natin. Kundi yung ano, law of the kingdom. It is the law that will tell us that we are guilty of sin. The law gave us the knowledge of sin. Di ba sabi ng Bible? So take time to describe precisely what happened and clarify why you view this as an unlawful act. And be factual and specific and support your case with the scripture. And it could be something that happened when you were young or even in a recent occurrence. So it is important to describe the circumstances as precisely as possible. Okay? So, the next question is, did you seek peace? Your perception and judgment of a situation are by definition bias. Like for example, say mo, ay na-offend ako ni pastor. It's always bias. Kasi hindi mo naman tinignan kung ano yung sinabi ni pastor. O, di ba? Ang focus mo lang ay yung nararamdaman mo, yung emotion mo. And Jesus explains the way by which we should solve our conflicts. Anong sabi ng Bible? You can do this alone as, or, or as a witness to join you as one who actually witnessed what happened. Di ba sabi ni Lord? When someone is offended you, you go to him alone and settle the issue. And if you do not listen, if someone who witnessed the incident, you bring a witness. Nakuha niya po? You bring a witness. When you're unsuccessful in restoring the relationship, you can proceed by presenting a case before the heavenly judge. So kung hindi mo siya na-win, you bring it before the judge. Nakuha niyo po? And let God make the judgment. But the very purpose you're going there is you want to seek peace. You want to restore. Not to, ano, retribution. Hindi gantihan siya. Di ba? Wherever, if your brother sin against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. So the very purpose of talking to the brother is to gain, again, the fellowship. But if he will not hear, take him with you one or two or more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, then tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him 
be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Okay? So, what did you do to restore the relationship? Did you talk to him? When you aren't able to resolve the conflict by yourself, you can present your case to the heavenly judge. So, yun lang yun ang pwede mong gawin na pwede mong dalhin sa judge ko hindi mo nagawa na ma-restore ka sa kanya. That is what you're doing when you enter the mobile court with your witnesses to present your case. But do this only if all the efforts have failed because when you start to plead, the question will be, what have you done on earth to resolve this conflict? Kasi, sabi niya, love your neighbor. Di ba? Love your enemy. Oh. Hanggat di mo ginagawa yan, di mo pwedeng dalhin doon sa korte sa langit. Did you do your best to restore the relationship? So you need to humble. It always takes two to tango. There is a seldom a conflict where just one party is to blame. Tandaan niyo po yan. It always takes two to tango. If there is a conflict, hindi lang yung kasalanan ng isa. Kahit sa mag-asawa, pag may conflict sa mag-asawa, hindi lang yung kasalanan ng isa, it kasalanan niya ng dalawa. Nakuha niyo po. That's why there's so much rip disunity in the body of Christ. Because we don't know how to apply this. Di ba merong mga denominasyon na nag-aaway? Di ba? Makarating doon sa ano, regional trial court. Nanalo yung isang, par, isang party. Yung isang party na natalo, pupunta ngayon saan? Court of Appeals. is going to appeal the case. And then, the Court of Appeals nag-decide, panalo yung isa. So, anong gagawin ng isa? Babalik siya uli doon saan? Pupunta siya sa Supreme Court para i-arbiter yung kanilang kaso. There is a case there in the Bible, sabi ni Paul. Wala namang matalino sa inyo, wise, to judge, and why the heathen, the word, allows you, allows na siya, siya mag-judge sa inyo. Sabi niya, don't you know that at the end of the day, you're going to judge the angels? Oh. But the truth is this, kahit saan niya makarating na korte, kahit hanggang Supreme Court, I guarantee you, hindi na mababalik yung dating relasyon nung dalawang grupo na yon na dati magkasama, naghiwalay dahil for some reason. Nakuha niyo po? Eh di sana, doon pa lang sa simula, bago pa sila nagpal ng kaso, Tinanggap na nila yung pag-mediate ng ibang mga kaibigan nila na mga bishop o mga pastor at sabihin nila, o oh, sige, let's sit down. Ano ba ang problema? Kasi at the end of the day, hati na rin tayo. Kaya ang sabi ng ibang dyan, let us be civilized. Bakit? Hindi ba civilized thing ang ginagawa nila? I don't think so. Why not sit down and talk? Ano ba pinag-uusapan nyo? Property? Pera? O di hati na lang natin. Ganun lang kadali yun eh. But because the emotion is involved, the pain is involved, may pain, may offense. What did you do? What negative words did you speak in your anger? O, oh, di ba? And when you're angry and speak evil about your brother, Satan can use your testimony as an accusation against your brother. That's your mabigat and then he piled it before the court. This is the last thing you, you want because the accusation will not only affect your brother, it will affect the whole church, the whole body of Christ. You need to be brutally honest with yourself and ask Jesus how he sees the matter. You have to ask Jesus. Jesus, how do you see the matter? But when you don't listen, Ito mabigat. He will even use your enemies to get the message across. Take the initiative to ask forgiveness from the other person. That's what the court requires. You have to forgive. 
'di ba sabi ni Lord pag nag-forgive ka gusto mo makagante painumin mo at pakainin mo yung kaaway mo sabi niya sa Romans chapter 8 at pag ginawa mo daw yon you are putting a call in his head ha? ibig mo sabihin? hindi ho masama yun if you're going to study the scripture in the Old Testament when a high priest entered the Holy of Holies he bring a call in his hand at doon nilalagay yung incense Ang ibig sabihin ni Jesus, when you do good to the person who hurts you, what happens? And you let God na siyang magbigay ng justice sa'yo, you're giving God a legal right. You don't, hindi ka nag-file ng accusation sa tao na yon. Ano daw gagawin ni Lord? He will put a call in his head. Ibig sabihin, God is going to bring that person into the Holy of Holies. And that person with what experience the very presence of God and mag-change ang kanyang mind. Yan ang ibig niya sabihin. It doesn't matter if your part in the conflict was small. Don't start to shift the blame entirely to your opponent. Okay? Next, you have to know the accusation. Without a formal accusation, there can be no trial. So the indictment has to be grounded on the law of the nations. Kung sa lupa. Di ba? Like for example, yung political dynasty. There is no governing law about the political dynasty. Kaya you cannot accuse a politician na nagpapayaman doon sa ano? Doon sa, ah, nag, uh, tumatagal sa pwesto. Kung corruption, pwede. Pero kung yung pagtagal niya sa pwesto, pag natapos siya, papalit yung asawa, pagkat yung asawa, yung anak, so yung apo, o oh, paikot-ikot lang, ang tawag doon, political dynasty, but there is no uh, governing law about that. So they are not uh, violating any law. Sometimes you get a sense that someone has taken offense at you and you have no idea what you did wrong. Oh, di ba? Kaya ang sabi ng Bible, ikaw na nasaktan, ikaw ang lumapit. You might experience that the people talking about you or worse have caused you in the courts of heaven. So what can you do in these circumstances? It is imperative to know and understand the charges and accusations that have been brought to the court. So you have to go to the court. You ask the Holy Spirit, what are the accusations that's been brought against you in the courts of accusation? So one of the most important condition for a fair trial is the right to know what these are. Sa korte sa lupa, may batas yan na yung kinto na fair trial. Ibig sabihin, uh, the accused, the person that is being accused is innocent until proven beyond reasonable doubt. So hanggat hindi na puproven na yon, hindi pa siya guilty doon sa kanyang ano, Kasalanan na yan. At meron din siyang karapatan ng fair trial. Nakuha niyo po? So the public attorney has to tell you what the charges are and what the evidence is. There can even a mistrial when the district attorney withhold evidence. May mga ganyan. Pag yung district attorney yung nagpa-prosecute, eh, tinago niyang ebidensya. Oh. pwede magkaroon ng mistrial yan at sasabihin ng judge kahit guilty yung tao dahil may ginawang mali yung prosecutor i-declare niyang mistrial yon kaya madalas ganyan ang mga nangyayari sa mga cases dito nababayaran yung mga ano, prosecutor para hindi halata ilalaglag nila yung kaso naalala nyo yung kaso nung ano yung flight attendant ng PAL nung New Year na matay siya doon sa ano sa isa isang hotel kasama yung mga Becky na ang unang sabi ng police may rape daw then later on wala na bakit? eh yung police inimbel sa mukha agad 
yung bangkay without notice from the family and even he did not even wait for his boss na ibig sabihin you've been doing ang pag-autopsy for so long bakit mo i-autopsy agad ay crime may criminal case ang ano merong kaso yung may doubt yung ano yung pagkamatay nito o bakit mo i-embalsa mo kaagad you see bakit mo imbalsa mo? So, pag inimbalsa mo yan, wala na yung mga traces ng evidence. Hindi ko man masabi na wala siyang alam. This police has been doing that job for so long. Oh. Eh kasi no nang tumawag doon sa ano? Sa investigador? O tumawag doon sa mga pamilya? Oh. Na... I, baka po may COVID ito, baka mahawa kami. Eh, may investigasyon eh. Di ba? So, what happened? There was a mistrial. Doon pa lang sa pagkuha ng ebidensya, nagkamali na, so how can you prove that there is a rape or a crime? Wala. Kaya pag dinala mo yan sa korte, walang magawa ang prosecutor. Kasi the evidence has been tampered. And the judge will only decide based on what? On the evidence. This is also true in the courts of heaven. You have the right to know what charges are being brought against you. He doesn't, this doesn't only apply to the accusation that Satan has brought into court. It also applies to the accusation that are brought in by other human beings. Kasi tandaan ninyo, may mga tao din na magpa-file ng charges doon sa korte sa langit. Because the truth is, this is our experience. When you don't forgive a person, what happens? You literally file a case in heaven. You literally file a case in heaven. So, sabi niya, when you're going to the court and your adversary is accusing you, he urges you to agree with them quickly. Kaya ang sabi ni Lord sa Matthew 5.23, when the enemy accuses you, you, ag- you have to agree. You don't need to justify because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is why it's so important to be transparent and honest in your research into the reason behind the conflict. Bakit may conflict? Ano yung problema? Baka sa'yo nang galing ang problema. As the Holy Spirit, what charges have been brought against you? Then be honest and acknowledge your part. Then what are the lies of the enemy? One of the legal tactics the enemy uses is to put all the blame at your doorstep. Yan ang mabigat. He does this by gossiping and spreading, spreading lies about you. As long as you are silent about the accusation, that you hear in your mind, the enemy can control your life. So if there's an accusation like that, bring it before the court. The moment you come clean and reveal those inner thoughts, the truth can shine upon it. And do not let the lies of the enemy paralyze you any longer. So, it was Satan that caused Herod to kill all the boys in Bethlehem, ages two years and younger, naalala niya yan. In this manner, he tried to destroy the destiny of Jesus by killing him and a countless others. Hindi pa naman panahon ni Jesus mamatay ng two years old. Sana naghintay na lang si, ano, si Herod. Satan didn't succeed in killing Jesus, but I can imagine that he put the blame for the murder of the thousands of innocent boys on Jesus. At sasabihin ni Satan, because you were born, they had to die. Uh, di ba? So when he can touch us, he tries to put pressure on us by telling us all kinds of lies in order to completely undermine us. So you have to be very uh, wise. So after you have Describe the injustice afflicted upon you, you begin to balance this evil with the promises God made in His Word. So, kasama sa petition mo, you proclaim God's righteousness. Ano yung promise ni Lord? What does the Bible say about healing, deliverance, providence, and restorations? 
Because God watches over the widows and the orphans and those who have walked alone in life. And use this what? Promises in the Word of God to support your plea. You need a supporting verses. Okay? Use your own words to present your complaints or demand. It's the best. Use your own words. It is good that you have a template. Diba? Nagbigay ko sa inyo ng template. It's good that you have a template. But, it is a good thing to say it with, or, with your own words. You need to be specific, be clear, be transparent, and be loving. Okay? So, do I have to do all this before I can enter the courts of heaven? No. You don't have to. Eh, bakit pa natin pinag-aaralan, Pastor? But when you gain the understanding of the scale of the assignment God has given you, you are much better equipped to present your case in the courts of heaven. That's why the answer is also yes. You have to do it. It is for your own benefit. The mandate you have in the courts of heaven is directly connected with the assignment that you have received from God. Nakuha niyo po? It is connected. The end. Hallelujah.